May the 23rd, 2018. Guys, excuse my voice. Still dealing with a very sore throat. The summer cold. Um, trying to shake it, guys. I can't. I haven't done a blog talk show this week. I wouldn't last but about 10 minutes, if that long. And keep this video short, and I've got another one attached. But uh, you're looking at uh, NOAA's satellite imaging of the Gulf and the Caribbean. We now have a 60% chance of a tropical depression forming in the Gulf over the Memorial Day weekend coming up. Now, it's you can't see it because the clouds to the right are obscuring the circulation, but the circulation is setting right on the coast of Belize. Notice something else. As it got daylight here, something you don't see in the south a lot. Overnight, they chemtrailed an entire area. Now, I don't know where it originated. Uh, you got an airport at Jackson, but this is very unusual for this area. We don't have a lot of big cities. Now, if you go west, uh, where you see the big thunderstorm forming this morning in the Atlanta area, you've got them there. You've got New Orleans. you got Houston, but there's just uh, not a lot of airports here. You've got the Meridian Air Force Base, Keesler, down in Biloxi. But as we bring this close, you'll not only have a very good view of these chemtrails atlanta you've got a big storm coming with the heat of the day check that out coming out of uh, e eastern alabama right there and watch as the sun hits the top of those clouds again you can see the chem trailing guys very clear going to noah's uh forecast this five-day forecast it's going to set here for a couple of days not strengthen very much you've got she winds that are shearing but uh, that's going to change and it's going to either pull the storm straight up or maybe a little more to the east and go up in that area. But here's what they're saying. Uh, again, 60% chance. It went from 40 to 50 last night and then up to 60 this morning. Broad surface low center near the coast of northeastern Belize continues to produce a large area of cloudiness and showers extending from the northwestern Caribbean Sea across Cuba and into the Florida Strait. Little development. Uh, is expected during the next couple of days. But, uh, however, environmental conditions are then forecast to become better and more conducive for development in subtropical or tropical depression could form this weekend over the eastern central Gulf of Mexico. Chances are ramping up very fast. Regardless of development, the Cayman Islands during the next few days and over much of Florida and the northern Gulf Coast, guys, is going to get a lot of rain. Here's your here's what they're talking about. Now this goes back to yesterday when it was a forty percent chance against sixty, but you got the wind shear that's going to shut it down for a couple of days. Then it's going to move northward and into the Gulf. Now the warmest water is south of Louisiana, going up into Texas. See that, and a lot of times these storms will follow that. The models have it going anywhere from that area to along the eastern coast of Florida now. But uh, more and more models are starting to come into play. Here's going to be the main problem. Miami, you're looking at 5 to 10 inches of rain all the way down to Key West. You can see the color code at the top of this, 5 to 10 right in there, the lighter oranges. Then look how it comes back into play from Panama City over into Mobile Bay, southern Mississippi, over towards New Orleans. So 5 to 10 inches of rain, and you know you're going to have some rip currents, you're going to have some gusty wind, possibly water spouts, tornadoes coming in, even if it doesn't become a hurricane, okay? Just because that much moisture. Now, here where I'm at, it's been kind of dry, a few thunderstorms, but Florida, you are you have been inundated, so watch for flooding in low-lying areas. And let's look at no wind for a minute and pull this thing up. You can see the center rotation is still in the Gulf, or excuse me, basically the Florida Straits there coming out of the uh, Caribbean. And you've got another low pressure setting on this side. Will that wind shear move that energy together? We don't know yet. We'll have to wait and see. But it, it, when this upper level wind shear stops, that is supposed to move into the Gulf. Now, your winds at surface level winds on the Big Island, guys, are moving from east west, basically northeast to southwest, and that's trying to keep some of that ash. But you look at this sulfur dioxide, it's heavily concentrated in that lower rift zone. Check that out. And if you look at the particulates that are in the air, tremendous amount. And so when you're dealing with um, lava and then the hydrochloric acid where the steam is hitting the ocean, it both are come in the ash, you are dealing with minute particles of glass. 
is never good for your lungs, right? Okay, guys, uh, watch the video from Hawaii News Now that's coming up to give you some updates on what's going on. This uh, They've opened up some new fissures there. They're, it is approaching the geothermal plant. They have 11 wells. 10 have been flooded with cold water to try to dampen it down. They haven't been capped. One, they have not been able to dampen down yet, well number 11. But look at the lava flow, how close it is. And at the end of the report, an ex-employee comes in and says it's a very, very dangerous situation because they will not be able to continue, excuse me, to keep that water cool. And so there's a, you've got huge splits coming up. You've got homeowners that are having to move out. And uh, notice in this video coming up that uh, some folks are allowed to go back into their home, and uh, it's not lava surrounded yet, but there's huge cracks going under the house and in the yards. But notice the vegetation. The grass is completely dead. The trees around it are completely dead just from the gas. And these people are walking around there. Anyway, guys, this is a heads up. Be safe. We'll be leaving for D.C. in the morning. And Christian, thank you so much for the Make America Great Again flag. Guys, I'm going to take a picture of it. I'm going to unfold it, take it outside, and take a picture of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And get it up uh, on the, this evening's video. It's beautiful. Thank you, Christian. And this is from Christian Christian's Par Christian Paradigms on YouTube, guys. He's got one of our meters. Uh, Christian, we appreciate it, buddy. Thank you, guys. It's a heads up. Be safe. First at five, the reactivation of a quiet fissure is raising concerns tonight about chemical threats in Lower Puna. Yeah, fissure number six started firing up again overnight, and the flow from that vent is now inching towards the Puna Geothermal Venture facility. We have team coverage tonight. Mahalani Richardson is in Pahoa. Lisa Kubota spoke with the Puna resident hospitalized after being struck by lava. Guy Hagi is tracking the air quality. But first, we want to hear from Governor David Ige and the head of the Hawaii County Civil Defense on the PGV threat. We do believe that all 11 wells are at a place that's stable and the risk um, to uncontrollable release of um, hydrogen sulfide has been mitigated. If the well's impacted and, and we get a sense of, you know, maybe H2S release, and our monitors pick it up, you know, we'll see what levels they are and, and take appropriate action. Um, if it's at low levels, you know, people can go home. If it's, if it's at elevated levels, then we have to make a decision where we, where we uh, house people. Meantime, a man who worked at PGV for many years tells Hawaii News Now that the well quenching isn't enough to prevent a blowout. The man who didn't want his name used says all of the wells need to be plugged, preferably with a cement fill after they are cooled. He says that puts several hundred feet of cement between the public and the pressure building below. That's because he says the quenching can only cool the wells for so long. The big question is how long does it stay quenched? They can't continuously pump water down there at some point. They're going to have to disconnect, you know, with the lava inundation. You know, it's been producing all this time, so there's steam and pressure down there. All they've done is cool the well off temporarily. We pump a bunch of water in there, you've cooled it off, but, but you still have the burner on below. State officials say none of the wells are plugged at PGV. Ten of the 11 have been quenched with water. Meantime, in Leilani Estates, this home is on the verge of falling into large cracks that have opened underneath it. This is new video from the upper portion of South Moku Street. The homeowner told us that she and her family evacuated two days after the first fissure opened up earlier this month. This video was taken this morning. Moving back in is not an option for the family. They say they can only return to get their belongings. Right now they're staying with family but are looking for a new place to stay. Meantime, a man whose leg was shattered by lava spatter is sharing his painful story tonight from his hospital bed. Lisa Kubota joins us now with details of the first known injury from the Kilauea eruption. Lisa. Staff Sean Darrow Clinton lives in Lower Puna towards Kapoho near Green Lake. The father of two is simply grateful that he survived. This one wasn't a, an arcing shot. It was a direct line drive as if it came out of a 
a rifle barrel. Daryl Clinton was helping protect two homes on his friend's property where he lives. He says Fisher 17 burst open about 300 yards away on Mother's Day, and then the flow started to move. The yard became littered with lava spatter. This lava bomb came and hit right here. Large lava bombs shattered windows, struck the water catchment pool, and damaged the septic tank. These lava bombs are falling, hitting the roof and catching the roof on fire. And so myself and some other neighbors were helping out watch the place so it didn't burn down. So as the, the bombs had hit, we put the fires out. But by Saturday, he says the activity had started to taper off. He was on his cell phone on the third floor lanai when he was struck by flying molten rock. I saw about that much of it before it hit my leg. It was about that big around. Um, it hit my leg right here and threw me against the wall. Landed on a sofa chair that was on fire from the, the lava exploding. The impact nearly severed his left foot from the leg. A friend called 911 and drove him out to meet first responders who rushed him to Hilo Medical Center. It was a, the most uh, forceful impact I've ever had in my body in my life. I'm, I've been hit by big waves and uh, various things. That was just incredibly powerful and hot. Clinton now has a titanium rod and screws in his leg. He's able to move his toes and says his prognosis is good. Doctors did an amazing job. I can't believe they could put it back together. I thought it was, I just wanted to live. I, I didn't care if they cut my leg off down there or not.